What's up everyone, Adam here from Cape Crawlers and today we're gonna to take a look at the brand new Axial UTB18 Capra. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Got a great video for you today. We got our hands on the brand new Axial UTB18 Capra, the mini Capra. This is gonna be a really cool video. This is my first foray into the bigger scale crawlers. We'll see if it's gonna be a gateway drug and leads me to the bigger ones. I don't know, I can tell you that I'm really enjoying this so far. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at this thing from a bunch of different angles. We're gonna look at the features, we're gonna look at first impressions out of the box, we're gonna do some comparisons with the SCX24s, we're gonna talk about driving impressions, and then we're gonna show you a bunch of run footage. I've got some awesome crawling footage of this thing doing what it does best out there hitting the rocks. I've got some night crawling footage, taking advantage of these really cool lights on here. So it's gonna be fun. And then after the run footage, we'll come back and we'll bring it all together. And I'll give you my final thoughts on the Mini Capra. So there's been a bunch of other folks who've done great content on the specs and the features of this thing. So I'm just gonna kinda of hit these at a high level. I'm not gonna dive into them in great detail. I wanna spend most of our time focusing on the comparisons and the run footage. So why don't we kick this off and dive into the features of this thing. Starting with the chassis and suspension and some of the drive line here, let's look at the one of the obvious things is the big portal axles. This has portal axles front and back, licensed by Curry. We have adjustable coilover shocks. These are oil-filled shocks, which is very cool. They are a composite body, but you do have the preload adjustment there from the factory. We've got Nitto Trail Grappler tires on Raceline black plastic wheels. These are soft and squishy, much softer than I originally anticipated. And we've got a four-link suspension setup. So we've got metal links on the bottom and we've got plastic links on the top. It comes with a Spectrum SLT2 2.4 gigahertz transmitter. It has a 37 turn 380 sized brushed motor. It's got a full size 10th scale servo on it. It's got a full suite of LED lights and the headlights, the light bar and the rock lights. It's got a realistic interior with two drivers in it. Chassis is a tube design just like the big Capra and it's got this really cool hood function that pops open where you have your battery sitting right in there. It's got this clip on the front, makes it really easy, nice and clean. So this also comes with your basic set of tools. You've got a couple Allen keys here, wheel nut wrench, bind plug, a balance charger, and an extra set of wheel hexes, which are actually just a little bit narrower than stock. Now let's talk about first impressions. So like I said, this is my first kind of entry level larger scale crawler. So I've been, been focused on the 124s this whole time, basically my whole time in the hobby. So this was kind of my first foray into the bigger crawlers. So when I opened up the box and saw this thing, realized how big it was, that was the first impression I got was just, it's much bigger than I expected. I'd seen the pictures and the comparisons online, seeing it in person compared to a 124, it's much bigger than I expected. It's got a nice solid feel to it. It's very cool looking. I love the body work, the orange. I like the orange is like my favorite color. So the orange and gray Fox livery here, very cool. So from a visual perspective, I liked it a lot. The size definitely caught me off guard. It's definitely big. I mean, 18th scale, come on. You know, the elephant in the room is the scale that they claim it to be. It's definitely more like a 14th scale. I really like the body. Like I said, I think the cage looks great. The body work, the paint, the, all the stickers and everything, it's got a fantastic look to it. I love the hood latch mechanism. You open up the hood here to get to the battery. I think that is super cool. I love that design. So there's no hood pins or Velcro or anything like that. The lights, the lighting system is fantastic. I'm very impressed with how bright the lights were. They were you know, very, very bright. And I took this thing out at night, which you'll see. It, it, it's impressive how much light they put out. So, tires, these Nitto tires are very soft. They are much softer and squishier than I felt from other rigs. Even 10 scale rigs, just kind of fondling them in the hobby shop. This, this has a much softer tire setup on it. They work really well, nice and soft and grippy. So I was really impressed with the tires. The wheels, not impressed with the wheels. That This thing got a lot of heat when it came out. People throwing a lot of hate at it for looking like a Walmart toy was what I saw. And I agree with others who have pointed out that it's probably the wheels that get, give off that impression. And I totally agree because it's just, it looks cheap. I don't know how else to say it. The wheels and tires, I mean, the tires are great, but the wheels just look cheap. And I've only run it, I've run about two batteries through it. And most 
of the orange paint on this back wheel is flaked off. It's chipping off on all four wheels, which makes it look even cheaper. So not impressed with the wheels. I think they definitely cut some corners on there and painting that outside ring just draws attention to these cheap looking wheels and makes it that much worse. The suspension, I really like the suspension. It's got these oil filled shocks that have a real nice feel to them. They're nice and soft. They work really well out on the trail. They are a plastic body, but you still got the preload adjustment right from the factory. The oil filled is just really neat. It does sit pretty high. That was another thing that I noticed too, is that the ride height is very tall. So I'm gonna be looking for ways to bring that center of gravity down, but still utilize all the travel of these shocks. I noticed really quickly the steering links on the front I mean, these are like, again, axial, come on, what are you doing? This is just like made of rubber practically. Reminds me of the stock FCX24 about how flimsy it was. And they're just like any type of resistance there, things bows right out. So definitely needs steering link upgrade right off the bat. So overall first impressions, you know, I was really a little overwhelmed by the size. It's very big, much bigger than I'm used to. Love the features that it has, the portal axles, the soft tires, the graphics and the paint, the cage and everything. It looks fantastic. So aside from the kind of cheap looking wheels and the rubber steering linkage, I was very impressed with it out of the box. Now, why don't we take a look at how this thing actually looks compared to an SCX24. I've got a deadbolt, mostly stock deadbolt that we've got that we can look at and do a size comparison. So let's take a closer look. Now let's do some size comparisons. Now look at this thing. So this is the 18 scale Capra and the 24 scale deadbolt over here. Deadbolt is mostly stock. It's got upgraded wheels and tires, but these are actually smaller than stock. So it's kind of gives you a sense of the scale here. It's enormous compared to 124. I mean, it, the Capra just dwarfs the 124 so much. It's, it's outrageous how much larger this thing is. Yeah, the size difference is crazy. Now, we were take this, take the Capra and look at it against a, this is a 1 18th scale Jeep Wrangler that we've got. So if we were to look at this thing, this is like, this would be quite the monster if it was a true 18 scale. Again, just looking at the size difference. It's massive. So, you know, I think this was just a shot across the bow at Traxxas coming out with the 18th scale crawlers, but I honestly don't really know what they were thinking with labeling it in a 118 scale. It certainly, from a visual perspective, I mean, you can't, can't logically make that claim that it's an 18th scale. It's a very big crawler for that scale. This is a 12th scale Jimmy from FMF. And excuse my son's decorating. He really, he's, he likes the stickers. So now I think FMS does a really good job with their scales. So I think this is a true 12 scale. Now looking at the Capra compared to the Jimmy, I would argue that this is more of a 12 scale than even a 14 scale. It's definitely much more in line with the Jimmy than any other rigs that I have. And it, this certainly looks comparable to me. So I would probably lean more towards a 12 scale if I was going to classify it as anything else. That looks much more realistic comparing these two together. But you know, the size doesn't bother me. I like the size of it. It's got a good feel to it. It's still small enough to use indoors. It's a little big for our crawler course, but the size doesn't bother me. It's just really questionable, you know, what the motives were of labeling it an 18 scale. And like I said, I think it's just a shot at Traxxas. And you know, the industry seems to be looking at the 18 scale as kind of the next wave of products coming out. So who knows, but in any case, I think it's more like a 12 scale. Yeah, definitely, definitely really big compared to the other small crawlers that we have. Getting into the fun stuff now, let's talk about driving impressions. So before I get into the driving impressions, I have to tell you that this is my second Capra. My first one had an immediate electronics issue. So I got it out of the box, did my unboxing, got it booted up and the transmitter and everything on and put it on the course, our indoor course, and it didn't make it 20 seconds before the servo started going crazy. It would just, I'd turn it on, the wheels would start jumping, and then it would lock to one side, and then there was nothing, no steering at all. 
I had to rebind it a couple times, but it would still do that same thing. And then after the third or fourth time of doing that, it just quit entirely, had no steering. Still had throttle, but no steering. So it took it back. We diagnosed it at the local hobby shop, Centerline Hobbies. Shout out to Centerline to hooking me up and taking good care of me over there. We diagnosed it as a bad ESC. So who knows what caused it? It just was not happy right out of the box. So we swapped it out. I got a brand new rig and that is kind of where we're at right now. So since the swap, I've got this new rig has been fantastic. So I really enjoy driving it. It's a lot of fun. So I've taken it out a couple different times. I've run probably two, two full battery packs through it now and it works really well. I like it a lot more than I thought I would, to be honest, especially in totally stock form. It's very smooth. The power delivery is excellent. I almost wish it had more power off the bottom though. I found myself wishing that it had a little more, little more punch right in the early bit of the throttle, but that could just because I'm used to the brushless systems on my little guys. But once this thing was up and running, it worked really well. It does have the three power modes on it. It's got 50%, 75, and 100 that you can adjust on the transmitter. I ran it in 100 the whole time. It had plenty of low end power to get up and over all the technical obstacles I went after and had plenty of speed to you know keep ahead of me as I was going down this trail when it got easy. So I like that. The obstacles it was able to get up over. So this is a really challenging spot for my 124s just because of the, the rockiness of it, the loose rocks. They're kind of all like football sized and softball sized and it's on kind of a moderate uphill the 124 is really struggle out there with the exception of the gladiator but this thing man just shredded that spot it was like gliding straight over everything the ground clearance from the portals these big squishy tires and the shocks and the articulation the way it works it, it's really capable and i was very impressed with how it was able to navigate that section so very cool i liked it a lot more than i thought i would i found that the the skid plate, you know, this kind of boat style skid plate that worked really well as I was kind of bumping up over obstacles. It really did a good job of like getting up and sliding over things. So I really liked the chassis design. It worked great. The lights. So I took the thing out at night to test out the lights. They are so bright. And you'll see when I do the run footage, it's incredible how much light this thing puts off. So very impressed with that. It was fun to do some night crawling with it. Tires hooked up really good. So the, again, these tires are really soft and squishy and they do a great job out there. So I was really impressed with what it was able to, to climb up over. I'd kind of come up on things slow and kind of creep over them. And when it gets stuck, you just hammer the throttle and, and it would hook up and just rip out of there. So it was fun. So overall driving impressions were great. You know, I do wish I could get the center of gravity down a little bit. It did tip over a couple times on some fairly aggressive side hills sooner than I would have expected but it does sit high as you can see, like it does just have this, this high ride height. And I think if we could bring that down it would really improve performance, but otherwise you know, I'm very impressed with it. It was a lot of fun. It's a uh, very cool right out of the box. So how about I stop talking about driving it and show you guys the crawling footage. Let's take a look at that right now and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts.
here beach side check it out full moon out tonight this is vineyard sound in woods hole massachusetts look at the lights coming off of this thing holy moly we're gonna go take it out on the beach see how it does with the lights it's crazy how much light it puts out it's wild So what'd you think of the run footage? Pretty cool, right? Man, I had a blast out there. So much fun, especially at night. The lights on this thing are crazy, crazy bright. That was really neat being out there with the full moon and everything. But anyway, let's wrap this up. Let's bring this thing home. What are my final thoughts on the UTB18 Capra? I can sum it up in three things. It's big, it's fun, it's expensive. 
So let's unpack that a little bit more. So it's big, not really big from an RC perspective. It's much bigger than what I'm used to from a 24 scale. It's certainly big for an 18th scale, and I don't mind that. I know it's taken a lot of heat for it. It's become the, you know, a big joke in the RC community, I think, is, you know, why I'd call it the 18th scale. It's definitely got some sort of existential crisis going with the 18th scale label. But let's put that aside and just talk about it from an objective standpoint, ignoring the fact that it's a claimed 18th scale. I think the size is good. You know, it fits in my travel bag. It can still fit in a backpack. It's still usable on my indoor course in the backyard, although it, it conquers those things pretty easily. But it's still it's still usable in a small, limited environment. So I think from a mini crawler, smaller scale crawler, it still kind of checks those boxes. But it's also big enough to where it's it's capable to tackle pretty aggressive obstacles. And it's heavy enough and solid enough that it feels really planted on the trail and going through those big challenging and technical sections. So I think it strikes a pretty good balance between practicality of the small scale crawlers and capability of the larger 10th scale. It's a really kind of interesting blend. So it's fun. I had a blast with it. I kind of got this mainly because I wanted to do content on it, you know, full transparency. I would probably not have bought it otherwise if I didn't have the YouTube channel and I didn't want to share my experience with you guys. It's just, it wasn't something that was on my radar. And I know that this was kind of unplanned and when it came out, I was kind of excited about it. But now that I've driven it and have spent some significant time on it, I really like it. I really had a lot of fun with it, much more so than I was expecting, which really, you know, going back to the beginning of this video, is this the gateway drug that gets me into the bigger scale crawlers? I don't know. I think it could be because I can just see the benefit of more weight, more power, more technology in the bigger scales. This is just kind of a shrunken down version of that. But the Capra itself, I really enjoyed it. It was capable, it was fun, fun to watch, fun to watch it articulate, fun to see it climb up over obstacles. It surprised me from its capability standpoint. You know, being so used to the 124s on that technical crawling spot, what's technical for them is just like a breeze for this thing. So it's going to be fun to go scope out new spots and find new challenges for this rig, and I'm looking forward to it. Also looking forward to see what the aftermarket brings. I know that's going to be really neat to see what we can do from a custom build perspective and really kind of address the shortfalls that I pointed out earlier. Let's talk about the price. So at 250 bucks, it's pretty pricey. I know that turned a lot of folks off when this was released. And I kind of felt the same way. I still do, actually. I feel like for 250 bucks, I would have expected some higher quality wheels, a less rubbery steering linkage, and potentially a rear steer. You know, I, I just feel like $250 is a lot. You do get a lot of good features with this thing the portal axles, you know, the high quality bodywork, the technology that it does have, the metal gears and bearings and everything all the way through it. So you do get a lot, but it's, it's hard to swallow that $250 when you look at the wheels and that flimsy steering linkage and, you know, kind of the, the lack of four wheel steer compared to its big brother, the 1.9. So price is kind of a sore spot, I would say. But despite all of that, despite the price, you know, despite the existential crisis that it's having with its 18th scale labeling. I think it's a great rig and I'm really happy that I got it. I have a ton of fun with it. I would totally recommend it. It's definitely a blast. So I'm enjoying it. I'm really excited to see what the aftermarket offers for this thing. I have already purchased nearly all of the axial accessories for this. So the next set of videos that we're going to be doing, will be bolting those upgrades on and seeing the difference that it makes. Also looking for kind of some hacks and some ways to lower the ride height down. I've got to do something with these wheels. But in any case, it you know the build begins. And you can tell that you like it and you're having fun with it when you can't wait to start throwing upgrades on it and seeing what you can do with it. So I really feel like I've taken ownership of it. I really enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to spending more time with it. And I think that's a good indication that it was a win. So I liked it a lot. I'm happy with it. I'm glad that I got it. I was pleasantly surprised with it. I'll leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think? Have you driven one yet? Are you going to pick one up? Let me know your thoughts. 
Thanks for watching, you guys. Really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. We're going to be doing a lot of work to this thing. There's going to be a lot more Capra content coming as I throw these upgrades on. We're going to see what we can get out of this thing. And who knows where it's going to take us and where it's going to take the channel. This could be the gateway drug, like I said, that gets us into the tenth scale. And then we're going down a whole new rabbit hole. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be fun. It's a, Man, this is just an amazing time to be in the crawler hobby, the RC hobby in general. I say that all the time, but this is just another new addition for us enthusiasts to have fun with and build and customize. And I'm excited to share it with you all. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate your time. And we'll see you in the next video.